Hey there everybody and welcome back to another Open Shading Language tutorial, the only tutorial series that seems to exist about Open Shading Language. Uh, in the previous tutorial, if you haven't seen it, we talked about what OSL is, how to actually set it up in Blender, and we actually made our first script. Uh, in every video, I want to advance our knowledge, get more and more complicated, and of course, uh, teaching you the code as we go along. So, let me tell you the objective for this tutorial. What we're going to do is we're going to basically recreate a node that exists. So it's not necessarily a useful script, but it's more advanced than what we had before. So we're going to take the math node, which what is a math node? It has one, two inputs, and then we do some function on it. So we add a, or operation. We add A and B, or we multiply A and B, or we subtract one to the power of the other. I want to basically recreate this in code. So two inputs, operation, one output. So just as a reminder, we got to be in cycles for open shading language. It actually works on GPU now in 3.5. If you don't have 3.5, I would recommend upgrading. And we are going to always start with the script node. Remember that we load in a text file, either that we write in Blender or externally. Uh, to do the text file, I'm going to go to the text editor, create a new text, and import that in. So again, if I write a bunch of nonsense like ABCD, not going to work because it needs to be actual code. What we said last time is we are making a shader. We can call it anything. So that could be apple, banana. It could literally be anything. So I'm going to call it anything. And we're going to put parentheses. And what I hear are called curly braces. I called them brackets last time. but And if you recall, inside the parentheses, we put our initializing parameters. And inside the curly brackets, we put our code. So let's think about what we want. We want two inputs. So I'm going to, just like last time, I'm going to write float because I want to import a number. Float is a number. Call it x, or it could be a whatever. Just give it a name. So I'm going to import a float called x, and I'm going to initialize it equal to zero, and let's uh, run that. And you can see it gives us a input for our node. Um, that's great, but we can't really do anything with it. Um, we need some kind of output. But first of all, let's make a second one. They are comma separated, so make sure to add a comma. Float y, so that's just the name of my second thing. It has nothing to do with x, y, z axes. I'm also going to initialize this one to zero, and let's run the script. So now uh, we have two inputs uh, and no outputs. <laughs> so uh, we already talked about how to output. So again, comma. This time, make sure to write output float. So we're going to output a number because we're just going to do an operation on these, but you could output a color, a shader, you know. Output a float, and I'll call it z, and initialize it equal to zero. So now you can see we have x, y, and z, uh, but x and y don't necessarily do anything to z. So uh, inside our code, let's write something. Let's say this is an addition script. So z is equal to x plus y. And make sure to always put that semicolon when we're writing our code. Again, this doesn't mean they're equivalent. It means x plus y, that value, we're assigning to z. So I'm not saying these are equal to each other. I'm saying recast z so that it's equal to x plus y. Okay, I'm going to refresh it. And now if we increase x, you can see it's getting brighter because the addition is getting larger. And same thing with the other one. And we can add two values together. If instead I subtracted these... So I'm going to run it again. It's going to be x minus y. So I'm going to start with 1. 1 minus 0 is 1. And as we increase this, it's going to get darker until we get to negative values. Uh, some other things is we have multiplication. Uh, so you have 1 times 0 is black. Uh, x to the power of y. There's a lot of stuff we can do. In fact, we could even do complicated stuff. We could say x times the sine of y. So now we're getting into some of these math functions that are a bit more obscure, like logarithms and sines. We run that. I'm going to set x equal to 1. And as we increase our y, it's going to get white and black and white and black and white and black because sine is sinusoidal. It oscillates. It's periodic. So uh, we basically wrote a very simple script. Uh, do this, do this, do that. But Let's actually do something that we can't do inside of uh, the node editor, because otherwise, what's the point? So one thing I want you to notice is that with this math node, we always have two inputs, unless you're doing something like sine or cosine, where you have one output input. Um, so 
we can't add three numbers. We can only add two. If you wanted to add another number, you have to like daisy chain these together and now you have one, two, three inputs, but we don't have a single node for three of them. So wouldn't that be convenient? Well, to do that, all we have to do is say, let's add another input float called Z, initialize it to zero. Again, make sure you have your commas and I'm gonna give this a different name. I'm gonna call this triple because uh, it's gonna be some function of X, Y, and Z. Let's run this. Now you can see we have three inputs and a triple output. Let's say that our function is something like triple is cast from x times y times z, semicolon. Well, it's still going to be black because we're multiplying by zero. Even if I make this one, it's going to be black because one times one times one is zero. But the moment I make this anything bigger than zero, all of a sudden it works. And if I decrease this, it will make our value smaller. Basically, we created a math node that has three inputs, or we could have done four inputs, uh, whatever. So uh, what we learned in this tutorial is how to do some basic mathematical operations, and we reviewed the ideas of inputs and outputs. In the next tutorial, I want to take the same idea. We're still going to be making a math node, but instead of writing the, um, the function in some sense, the operation, instead of writing it in here, I want to write a separate function and then call it. So if you don't know what that means, don't worry. That's what the next tutorial is for, but just so you get a idea. So uh, as always, I like to say at the end of these tutorials that you can support me via Patreon link in the, in the description. It is what financially allows me to make these tutorials on CG Matter and Default Cube. Uh, without that, no tutorials. <laughs> not, not as a punishment, but just I can't sustainably do it. So I appreciate all it's a little under 600 now, sadly. It was above 600 at some point. But all like 600 some patrons, I appreciate your patronage. Uh, you could think of it as a donation to help me out, or uh, you actually get stuff in return. So you can get uh, blend files. So that's like years and years of blend files at this point. So you get access to a lot of stuff for just $5. Or if you pay a dollar, you get early access to tutorials, or you can get exclusive tutorials, of which I've made a few. So you can think of it as a donation or as an transaction. So either way, I really appreciate whatever reason that you joined the Patreon. It lets me do what I do best, which is this, I guess. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.